lean on us. We are here for you. You matter. You are not alone. Are you feeling overwhelmed? Not sure where to turn? The National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is there for you 24 7. Call or text 988 or chat at 988sc.org. Whether you're having an emergency or you know someone who needs support now, they can help you take the next step towards finding hope and healing. There is hope. 988sc.org. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Hey, y'all, it's Woody Overton, the host of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast, and you're listening to Local Leaders, the podcast. Hi, I'm Tricia Johnston, residential realtor with Ladder and Bloom with your real estate tip of the week. If you're a homeowner with a mortgage, one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself is to pay that mortgage off early. There are several options to get that done, but the first step is to make sure there's no prepayment penalty on your current mortgage. If not, the first option is to make one extra payment throughout the year. That can be done by adding a little extra to your monthly payment, adding a little extra once a quarter, or just making that one extra payment sometime during the year. The full amount will go towards principal, not principal and interest. The second option would be to contact your mortgage company to see if you can change your payment plan from monthly to every two weeks. Again, make sure there's no extra fees associated with that. And then the third option would be to contact a mortgage company to see if it makes sense for you to refinance at a lower interest rate in a shorter period of time. If you shorten the period of time, your monthly payment might go up a little bit, but the mortgage will get paid off a lot sooner. The one caveat about that is to make sure that you're not planning on selling your house within the next few years because there's some expenses involved in refinancing. You don't want to pay to refinance and then sell your house within a year or two. I hope this information has been helpful. I'm Tricia Johnston with Ladder and Bloom, and I'll be back here next week with another real estate tip for you. Hi folks, I want to tell you about Denim Springs Fit Body Boot Camp and their 28-day, $77 Jumpstart program. There's no strings attached and really no reason not to try. You can be in and out in just 30 minutes and best of all, these 30-minute sessions are scheduled throughout the mornings and evenings to fit your busy schedule. These 30-minute sessions are fun, positive, encouraging, and you can even sign up online. Just visit GetFitDenimSprings.com. Denim Springs Fit Body Boot Camp, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. All right, so welcome back to another edition of Local Leaders, the podcast. And today we have Chase Tyler in studio. Uh, Chase, how are you? I'm doing well, Jim. Thank you for having me. Buddy. Oh, I love it, man. I've uh, I've been to many a concert with Chase Tyler uh, headlining and, yeah. and uh, also doing some opening some for some other folks. And you rock it, man, uh, every time you're on fun. stage. We have fun. I don't know about rocking it, but we have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. And what I love about you is you're a Livingston Parish guy, right? I am. Born and raised right here in Denham Springs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Very and proud of that fact. I'm very proud of it as well. And you, uh, you people may notice that I have a Denham Springs uh, outfit on today and uh, Denim Springs, congratulations! You made the playoffs and you won the first round against Zachary. They're so killing it, yeah. Man, I got Coach a rep. Beard, man. He's really uh, he's done awesome things with that team. Yeah, man. he's intense. Yes. Dude. Big old dude. Dude, he's huge. <laughs> yes, he's so he's such a nice guy though. He's a big teddy bear. Every yeah, time I see him, shakes my hand, gives me a hug. He's just an awesome guy. He really is. One hundred percent. So shout out to Coach Beard. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking if he's coaching me, I'm doing whatever he tells Absolutely. me to do. Absolutely. Yeah, I ain't uh, jumping off sides. I'm Jay. glad he's on my side. Is all. 
all I know at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to meet him in a dark alley anywhere, for sure. That's right. That's right. So you're from the LP, which we're all very yes. proud of. We love our hometown boys here. And uh, you didn't just start singing last year, did you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Unfortunately not. No, I've been around for quite some time. Uh, man, it, it's it's crazy to think back on, you know, because things pop up on your Facebook, you know, every morning I get up and kind of look at, at, you know, social media stuff and things will pop up. Be like, um, 11 years ago, you were here. I'm like, oh, man, you think about it times <laughs> like that. It goes like it's just insanely quick. Crazy uh, fast. But man. no, I've been singing for a very long time. Uh, my mom and dad actually had, they were in a band together when I was, before I was born or any of that, obviously. That's how really? they met. They were playing music. Oh, and okay. My, both sides of my family played music. That's what we did. We're, yeah. you know, we're just a musical family. Yeah. So um, they met and had me, and there was just no way that I was ever going to get out without doing something musically. Yeah, you didn't have a chance. I didn't have man. a chance. No, it was just in my house and around our family all the time, no matter what. So wow. it really started from an early age. So um, uh, were they singers or were they yeah, played instruments? My, my dad, so my mom and dad separated, obviously. And, and so my dad went on to form his own band. And my mom kept singing just around the house. And she's actually the first one that showed me how to play my first chords on the guitar. So that's kind of where it started for me when I was a kid. I mean, little, just music around and then started playing the guitar. I didn't really, it didn't really take off for me until I was about 16. Yeah. When, I, when I was about 16, that's really when I, you know, I calmed down. I had, to make a long story short, I had uh, major inner ear problems, okay? So I had a, oh, wow. a, a major surgery the left side, I have a lot of prosthetic bone and everything, so I lost a lot of hearing on my left side. Had a big tumor on my eardrum, and to make all of that nastiness go away, I had surgery, so I couldn't play sports anymore. I was yeah. big into football, basketball, the whole nine yards. Sure. So I was kind of a bigger guy growing up. Yeah, you know, I was always a little bit taller than everyone, so I wanted to do sports. By the time I got sixteen, it, it they were like, "There's no way you get hit the wrong way, or you can't do football, and you can't do any of that." Oh wow! If you get hit the wrong way, you'll go completely deaf. So, got all of that out. No more sports. So I focused on singing, and and sixteen and on, it, it's been it's been music ever since. Yeah, it just has, and I think it's worked out well for me anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean I you, enjoy, you, know. you get, it, look, and you you get a crowd out there every yeah. time you play. Uh, a lot of people. I guess the way I would judge it if I were in your shoes is how many people come back, you know? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And you yes. have you have a lot of people that go to just about every every concert. Fans that have been coming out since I mean, literally the first day that we started playing music as a band, you know, and this is going back a decade now that 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 I've had this band and we've been, you know, Chase Tyler Incorporated kind of situation. So yeah. uh, they're they're literally people that are from the very first show that I've ever seen and 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 done that are still coming out to this day. And that's just, that's awesome. To yeah, see, that's going to make it's you feel good. Fan, it's friends, fans, family, um, everybody's family by the end of the show, for sure. Yeah. Now, you mentioned, you know, when you were 16, you kind of got real serious with yeah. this. And you, it, it, look, when we're all 12 years old, we say, I want to be this or that. Yeah. I, I was going to be a running back for the Saints yeah, until I realized I was too slow, <laughs> uh, too small, and all that kind of stuff. But <laughs> you saw it through. You kind of yeah. always knew this is where you were going to end up at some point, right? You know, I got fast-tracked very quickly. So, again, at 16, I started singing basically in, like, some karaoke competitions around the state. Yeah, and, and I mean, that was kind of, you know, my parents had, had played music and all of that, so it was always – around but my dad my mom and dad were divorced and so it was really difficult going back and forth between them so my real start was karaoke competitions and things like that well I ended up winning a statewide karaoke competition when right after I turned 16. Wow. From then on it was like this is definitely what I'm meant to do this is what I'm going to focus on this blah 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 a year later <laughs> fast track to a year later I am uh, arrested Awesome. <laughs> uh, thrown out of school, expelled, um, the whole nine yards, and sounds like a band to me, it, brother. It, it, that's, a, that's the makings <laughs> of the band, right there. You know, and a lot of people don't know that. That's it's a, it was a terrible time. I was going down a very dark road from sixteen to seventeen years old was a very, very dark time. I was hanging out with the wrong crowd, as as you do when you're 16, 17. Oh, yeah. you, know, yeah. I, you know, a lot of people have that same story. 
Um, a lot of people don't get caught smoking weed at high school and get kicked <laughs> out for it, though, like I did. And I did. It was my fault. I'm no one to blame but myself. Um, and it happened. But it 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 made me realize, like, I'm I'm headed. I, I, I had a choice at that point in my time. I was 17 years old, just got expelled from high school, not allowed to do anything. I mean, I'm, I'm literally on probation. Um, you know, I had to go see the community service. I'm picking up trash on the side of the road at this point. Yeah. You know, at 17 years old, like, I have a choice. I can stay this route, hang out with the same people, do the same thing that I'm doing, or I can – do this this route and I chose the other path and I moved from from Louisiana which was very difficult because I love Louisiana absolutely um I moved to Branson Missouri and I got into a show up there you know it's interesting too Chase that that was a point in your life where if it had to happen that was probably a good time for it to happen absolutely. because you uh, you almost got scared straight right like I, you figured out I can lose I did everything I, and and I did for I mean there was a good three month period right after I was expelled to where I was just I had no clue what am I going to do now right so yeah I'm, I'm done with school I was I was completely over it at this point I'm 17. I'm not going to try, you know, they, they expelled me for two years. So it was two years of wow. no, you know, no school functions whatsoever. No dances, yeah. no football games, nothing. So you are not allowed on school campus for two years. Yeah. Um, so that was really difficult mentally to deal with. All my friends are going to dances and football games and basketball games. And I'm just like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. And you're at that age, you know. You're again, my fault. I'm not trying to place blame on anybody else. Yeah, Mr. Saint Pierre, who is now uh, principal Walker's Walker, principal, yeah, yeah, who is who's actually the one who called the cops on me. One hundred percent in the right. He had every right to do so. I was in the wrong, but I, yeah. I like to tell that story. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I had to learn quickly. It was either going to go one way or the other, and and I I just didn't want to go down that that I had too many friends that. You know, I've seen do that and, and get expelled and do drugs. And I, and I just, man, I wanted better. Yeah, I wanted better, 100%. You know? So you do. You head off to Branson, Missouri. Branson. And why why Branson? So, again, the um, the statewide karaoke competition. Someone, mm. I literally just lucked up. Somebody was in the crowd and was like, hey, look, you're great, blah, blah, blah. We, we, we have some friends of ours that own a show in Branson, Missouri. We think you would be great for this show. And it was literally between the time that I got expelled and didn't know what to do with my life that I got a call from these producers from this show in Branson. Uh, there was, a again, a three-month period. I got expelled. I didn't know what to do. Three months later, the phone rings, and it's like, um, we want you to come to Branson and audition for the stage show. Yeah. I'm like, it was just a sign. Yeah, it was like, exactly. It was just, you know, I'm at this point, I'm working construction and, and not knowing what to do with my life. And three months later, I got the phone call, come to Branson, we want you to audition for a stage show. That was a no-brainer. So I yeah. did. I went to, uh, and I auditioned and got the part. Come on. And I got the part. And so I was in Branson for almost three years. I went from different shows with, uh, so I was in Mickey Gilly's show for a little yes. while. And, um, you know, Mo Bandy, if anybody remembers Mo Bandy from back in the day. Yeah. Um, you know, just doing stage shows. And I did that for almost three years. And that to me and what I tell everyone was my college experience. Yes. So that's where I got my stage experience, um, learning how to work a crowd and entertain and just perform. And yeah. That, that was a huge, huge turning point for me. BJ Pawn and Gun in Denham Springs wants to buy your unwanted gold jewelry gold coins, and gold bullion. With 30 years of experience operating in the Livingston Parish area, BJ Pawn wants to be your source when selling your gold. So stop by BJ Pawn today for a no-obligation offer. BJ Pawn, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. You know, and I'm glad you mentioned that because one thing that blows me away uh, watching you on stage is your ability to work a crowd. Man, it don't matter if there's 100 people there <laughs> or 1,000 people there. Chase Tyler's all over the stage. You really, your energy is uh, 
just something to be admired. I remember Garth Brooks one yes. time. Yes. Uh, I went to one of his concerts, and he was well known for yeah. his ability to be energetic on yeah. stage. And and an older gentleman when I went and watched him, but let me tell you, you wouldn't know it. It whether you were the last person way up at the top, and we know how many tickets he sells to a concert. Absolutely. They would feel like he was singing right to them. Exactly. He would go to the cheap parts of the, you know, behind the stage people and and stuff like that, and kind of work that crowd. But you remind me a lot of that because you run all over the stage. You're jumping up and down and and it's, all those sorts. It's a of things. lot of fun, and I and I tell you that music moves you. It just does. It moves you, and and it's not only that, Jim. When I look, I made a decision to to go professional. I'm gonna be a professional musician so that means that no matter how many people or how big the show is or how small the show is anybody that paid a ticket to get in to see me deserves the same show as I would give to a thousand people right? yeah so it's 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 I try to do that to everybody whether there's one or a thousand people there so it's that's just how I roll. Love it, man. <laughs> well, it, it, I'll tell you what, it's it's impressive. And, and I've been to a lot of concerts, and, yeah. and you were one of the best at just kind of working a crowd. So you cut your teeth there in uh, Branson and, and kind of, I would call that earning your stripes oh, in a is. way with Absolutely. the in your, in your world. And so did you ever get to the Nashville part of things? So after Branson, <clears throat> after Branson, the next logical step. At this point, I am... 20 years old, right? Not, again, uh, you know, Branson was great, but my whole, you know, my whole goal was always to move on and be Garth Brooks, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm 20 years old. Now I've got some experience in me. I'm going to go be Garth Brooks. 100%. So <laughs> I moved to Nashville. That's the next logical step. That's where everybody goes, yes. Nashville. And Nashville was terrible. It was <laughs> god awful terrible. Yeah, and, and I actually wrote a song about it, and it's called "Broken Road" for a reason because I the my last image of Nashville was I got uh, pulled over for uh, running a red light, and ended up. It was seven different violations on my truck. So I had no insurance <laughs> to my, my uh, no seat belt. I ran a red light. I, you know, so it was speeding. It was a, a something wrong with my license plate. My tent was, it was seven different violations that, that they ended up popping me for. Wow. And it, 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 it caught home when I was on the walk home because they towed my truck. I was in Nashville and I'm like, that's it. I'm yeah. done. Like yeah. I've had enough. This was this was a year into it. I'm just like I am starving to death. I I'm bartending at Logan's Roadhouse to yeah. try to make ends meet, and it was I'm walking on the side of the road trying to get back to my apartment. And I called my mom. I'm like, I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> I've had, this is a year into it. I've had enough. I, so I did. I came home with my tail between my legs. Terrible, terrible experience. Yeah, I can. I you know, and and I've heard. Uh, how tough it is up there just from up look another I hate to quote Garth Brooks um, again but one thing he said was you could go to Nashville and you could walk in any bar in Nashville at any given time and he said you probably find someone that sings better than me absolutely uh, that does you know maybe they look better than me but he said uh, what he felt like separating was that ability to work the crowd and bring wow. energy to what he's doing uh, but there's a lot of people, Chase, that are amazing on singers. On the street that corner get... that are just, that are, that are so good, man. It's, yeah. It is. You take a look around Nashville and like exactly what he said. You walk down Broadway and go, what am I doing here? You know, yes. how in the world am I ever going to break into this madness? And I just never did figure it out. Yeah. This day. Yeah. Well, you know? don't feel alone, Chase. <laughs> 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 I mean, there, that might be 1% or something Absolutely. of the, you know, it's, it's insane. And that industry in general reminds me a lot of the political industry. Yeah, it's so extremely good. cutthroat. So cutthroat. It is. The music business is just, uh, you know, I think Billy Joel said it best. If the devil was ever going to get into a business, he'd get into the music business. It just, <laughs> it just Love it. is that cutthroat, you know? Yeah. That's Billy Joel, man. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, you're, your country, right? You sing country I music, country. but country. are you just a country music fan or are you a fan of all music? Oh, I'm a huge fan of all music. There's, yeah. there's nothing that I love more than, than, um, I was raised on Skinner and, oh, and yeah. Southern rock and, yes. and, you know, that kind of stuff, uh, blue 
blues and uh, very eclectic. I like all kinds of music, and I like to sing all kind of all kind of music. Our you know our, our generally our uh, original songs are more country, southern rockish, but I I love. All rap, even you know, yeah, there's, there's look, just Eminem, on Eminem, a, on a, absolutely. Whoo. It just it's in the it's a it's a mood thing, and music is right. subjective. It just depends on your type of mood or your day that you're having, what you want to listen to, or what can put you in uh, that kind of mood. Hundred percent. And I'll tell you one thing that I I notice even about myself is, you know, I, I drive a lot different places, yeah. and I would notice if I didn't take time turn on the radio. Sometimes you you just think you're in the car and you're thinking about what you got to do, but towards the end of the day, the day I would notice, man, I didn't listen to any music today. Yeah. My mood is different. It's different. I Changes pop that music you. on. And yes. A hundred percent. It is a very emotional thing. It music. Is. It is. And it just depends on the song. You know what I mean? It, 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 some, some songs can put you in a somber mood and, other songs, uh, you know, have the ability to make you happy and joyful. So yes. It just, uh, it just depends. And they can bring you back to a time, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I can tell yeah, you th- my first kiss, I can tell you what song was playing. Really? To this day. That's awesome. Yeah. See, that's awesome. It, it's, it's, it's great. I don't know if like she that. can, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> she probably forgot she about it. I want to remember it. I don't God, know. don't say my name. <laughs> don't say my name. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome but I, I really can i mean there's there's and i'm sure everybody's like that where you hear that song and you're like man i was 10 years old yeah. and i was in yogi bear yeah, or, you absolutely. know whatever Music so has uh, that ability it really does what a beautiful sure. thing now at some point you came back home and you formed the chase tyler band yeah so i wasn't done traveling yet I, so from Nashville, I'm like, my, my biggest thing is I'm going to go back home and start a band, right? That's, yeah. that's the deal. So I did. I, I moved back home. I started a band, and that didn't go very well either. Uh, about a year into it, we we're literally doing every daiquiri shop, you know, around, which is great, and that's where you start. Sure. But it just wasn't pushing for whatever reason. So I got another phone call. Um from uh, some producers for a show in New York. Oh, wow. Out of all the, the world, you know? It's yeah. like, look, it's an off-Broadway play. We think you'd be perfect for it. We saw your, saw you in Branson, you know? We know your stage performance and all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, man, things aren't really working out great for me right now. You know, at this point, I'm 21, and I'm just like, a, I'm young. Let's 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 go to New York. So I did. I, I, I went, they flew us to New York, and I, I spent six months um, at a theme park, it was a theater inside of a theme park up there in upstate New York, and uh, an amazing time, experience, stage presence, the whole the whole nine yards, and it was awesome. Wow! And I really, really enjoyed my time up there. Again, a learning experience, just working crowds and and doing the whole thing. But it still wasn't home. It right. wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to do my own music, my own you know situation in my own state. And so I came back to Louisiana and kind of got serious about it then, you know, yeah. I really, really pushed for really good musicians and good songs and things started to turn around a little bit after that. Um, of course, after that, I met my wife. So, yes. <laughs> you know, she's, she's definitely uh, been my biggest supporter and fan <clears throat> throughout the whole situation. So we've been together 14 years now. And, and that's Miss Lindsay. And that is Miss Lindsay. Yeah. Yes. Yes, definitely. So, um, you know, with her support and, uh, you know, everyone's support, family, friends, it kind of started to grow, kind of started to grow and push, push, push. And, um, you know, it's interesting how a lady can bring you balance and, yes. and really almost mature. Absolutely. You. I um, agree. And I'm speaking of me, I'm not saying you, yeah. but no, both of us truth. probably. It yeah, absolutely. The truth. That's exactly how it works. Um, they kind of ground you a little bit and, and, uh, you know, I've had a, a lot of support. Yeah, so I'm, I'm very, very blessed. Yeah. Very good. So you do you 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 meet Lindsay. You uh, you know, at some point you decide you're going to get serious. You're going to form a band. So what do you, what do you do at that point? Do you go say, hey, who wants to who wants to play with Chase Tyler? <laughs> Basically, yes. So I you know I had I had a few songs that I had written and, and a couple of things that I were I was working on at the time. And there was a song that my dad uh, wrote, and it was called uh, Louisiana, just Louisiana. And I'm like, man, this is a really cool song. I want to record it. So I did. So the president of the Louisiana Music Hall of Fame heard it, loved the song. He's like, man, so I get a call from him. He's like, man, I love your song. And this is great. I want to put it on a compilation album with some other Louisiana artists and, and 
do some stuff. I'm like, of course, yeah. absolutely, you know, yeah, please take all. I got more. You know? so <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, this is Louisiana. It's about Louisiana. I'm like, yeah, I get it. So, <laughs> he, so he does. He takes the song, he puts it on the compilation album with Wayne Toops and a, a lot oh, of other, yeah. you uh, know, all the Louisiana artists. It was, it was, yeah, it was a really, yeah. really big honor. We went to the governor's mansion and did some, uh, some shows out there, and and I did some shows with uh, Louisiana Music Hall of Fame, and in 2011. They inducted me into the future famers category. Yes, and that was still a kind of a newer concept that they were that they were coming up with. So I'm I was the fifth member to ever be inducted into the future famers, and before me it was Hunter Hayes. Wow! So another great, another singer. great Louisiana. Yeah. yeah, the whole operate. So man, I was just I was pumped. You know, I'm at the state fair, and we're playing at the state fair. They come out, do this big production, bring me this big plaque, and everything. You're inducted into the Louisiana Music Hall of Fame, you know, future famers category. I'm pumped. Honestly, from then, things started to pick up. You yeah. Know, the fairs, the festivals, the, you know, that kind of stuff started to come calling, and it became just a little bit easier to get, you know, shows. Yeah. It did. Um, with that comes – you know, just grinding at that point, you know, we're just, we're and putting the band together. We're working on songs, we're working on albums, we're working on shows and how to improve everything about our look, our style and, and just moving forward. Hey ladies, it's Pate with Idol Lane Spa and Boutique located in Walker. We offer all things, skincare, hair care, makeup, spray tan, lashes, and more. And we have a full selection of clothes. And we also do private events from birthday parties, bridal showers, and more. So stop by today and get your queen on, making every woman a queen. See you soon. A lot of people will look at, and they'll kind of clown some country music artists that yeah. uh, are mainstream, and, yeah. and we don't have to name any names, but sure. they'll say, oh, they're not really country. And they, but what they don't realize is a lot of these guys and gals are being forced right. to have that sort of image they're great singers great singers and, and a lot of your artists today they don't they don't have a choice as to where their music goes they make music and you know the the people that are behind them all their backers and all of their music reps and all, they decide what's really going on you yeah know, the, the the music today is a lot of there's a whole different sub world that people don't realize what goes on behind actual music and the singers that put these these songs out have very little to do with where it goes and how it's being promoted. And yeah. it, that's just the way it is. It's the people that have the money that back them that that make all the decisions. Hundred um, percent. I've I've talked to to record producers and and I've never been offered a recording contract per se. Um, I've been offered several contracts to uh, for radio promotion and and for other things like that and. I've turned almost all of them down basically because it's it's like we will put you out on the road, we'll do this, and we'll pay for it, but we own you kind of a situation. Yeah. Like we will take 100% of everything, we'll give you enough money to live on, and that's it. You know what I mean? So yes. My, I always wanted to grow my own my own brand and not have to do that. You know, I want to be like, I want to – I'd look – at this point in my life, Jim, it's, it's like this. I don't want to be Garth Brooks anymore, yeah. okay? That time for me has come and gone, and I am much, especially with everything that goes on in the world today with politics, and I, I don't want to be a part of that world. Yeah, I want to travel the Gulf Coast area, stay right here in my little sweet spot, and play music for what I want to do, and that's it. And, I, and if I don't want to go to Canada, I don't have to go. And that's right. I don't right. have to answer to anybody to do that, you know? So... I, uh, you know, I've kind of worked on that for myself and my band over the past, um, past few years now. Fantastic. And yeah. it's, it's, uh, I think, you know, for what it's worth, I, it's, it's a great decision because you're right. They do, man. They own you mm -hmm. at that point and they are calling the shots and, oh, and, uh, you become almost an object. It is. It, it, right? That's exactly it. They'll give you enough money just to live on and, and it, then they take everything, and and that's the music industry in a, in a whole. And of course, there there are always those artists that that fall through the cracks and and become huge success, and then they start their own record label, and they go, "I'm going to make all the shots," which you have to have a lot of money to do that. Yeah. Um. And that's the great way to go about it. But I just, man, with the way things are in the world today, there's there's a lot going on. Uh. That I think it would be best for me <laughs> to just do my own situation, not sign any contracts that I'm not comfortable with. And yeah. I just want to play music 
in and around the Gulf Coast area. Love it. That's it. Love it. And that is your sweet spot. And everybody is. knows you that around is. here, loves you. Um, now, let me ask you, I've always been intrigued to ask another artist, who you would, you know, who do you think is a great in that industry? Someone, and I know there's bunch, a lot of them, but I'll, I'll tell you, in my opinion, one of, I think one of the greatest artists in music history is Prince. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Just an yeah. unbelievable guitarist and an unbelievable singer and an unbelievable Song stage writer, presence. Stage, oh, I mean, he, he was literally the the uh, triple threat. He sang, he played, and he wrote almost all of his songs. Yes. It's insane. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Was, and when Eric clapped him, when they say, what's it like to be the greatest guitarist ever? And he says, I don't know. You need Prince. to ask Prince. Yeah, absolutely. That's That's <laughs> like, coming from Eric clapped. Oh, because my gosh. I think, a lot of people, I think a lot of people like are like, yeah, Prince is a great guitar player, but they don't realize how great. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, he really, really was in a field, uh, you know, all of his own. He really was. He was on a whole other level. But, yeah, the whole package, man. Yeah. Um, that uh, halftime performance, uh, <sighs> right, with Purple Rain, it starts yes. raining when he starts. Come on. That's amazing. Are you kidding me? You uh, can't write this stuff. It was awesome. Mm -mm. He, was, yeah, he, he was an amazing talent. And, I, yeah, uh, I agree. Missed out. You know, he was going far too soon, as, they, as a lot of them really are. Yeah, that's true. And uh, it's, a, it's a hard life. And I would imagine when you're at that level, it's, it's like kind of like a Michael Jackson thing. You Absolutely. just uh, – can't go out of your house. You know, I wonder. I wonder at that point, do you get to where your circle becomes so small because who can you really trust? Right? It's very hard to do. Who yeah. can you really legitimately? Of course, you have yes men around you. You know, twenty four seven. But who can you really trust? And your circle becomes really small. And I'm sure that that gets kind of depressing yeah. a little bit. You know, and and I know it's although you're adored by millions and millions of people, you kind of might be lonely a little bit, you know, yeah. because you can't just go to Walmart or go hang out at a bar with some friends or something. You can't do that anymore. Uh -uh. So I, I don't know, you know, yeah, I don't I'd... know what the right, right uh, answer to that is, but yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, it so really is. is. Yeah. Uh, so who would you, would you say, <laughs> you know, currently, currently right now, as far as just who is popular and who's, who, um, is really amazing as, as an artist, a writer, a performer, everything. I think Bruno Mars has uh, some of that yeah. same. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month. A savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials you know, gravitas that, that Prince does. Um, 100%. I think he's just such a great entertainer, performer, um, you know, and he's got such a good voice and, and I've never, I've never gotten to see him live. So if I've just, you know, we're busy whenever he's playing and I can never go to a concert of his, but, um, man, everything that I see about him or hear any songs that he does, he does like kind of a, a throwback with the horns and, you know, it, it's kind of like an old school funk sound too. Oh yeah. You know? And it's such a, such a great performance, you know, all the videos and everything that he does. I just think, um, I think I would, I would really, really like to see him live. Yeah. He's a, uh, he's amazing. And I, I saw a, something on TV with, I think it was a tribute to Prince and he did some things and also Morse day in the time did some, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, Oh, it was, 
Oh, man, it was great. <laughs> they had the mirror out there, and the oh, guy was fixing his hair and doing the spins. And I, I was like, it. man, I would have loved love to have seen these guys in their prime. Absolutely. Can you imagine? Uh, just uh, dancing and, you know, doing the whole oh 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 and <laughs> Yeah, that was great, man. But uh, awesome. made me think of that when you said that. So you're not the only one. People may be surprised that sings in your band. You have someone else that I sings. I do. Yes. Tell so, us about her. So listen, there's there's only good things that can come from hanging out with Amber McCann. Uh, you know, she's from South Carolina. That's where she was born, and and uh, she lived in Texas for. She grew up in Texas, and and kind of moved over here about eight years ago to Louisiana. So she's an implant, but uh, one of the sweetest ladies on the face of the earth. Period, and and has the voice to back it up as well. Yeah, I mean, absolutely beautiful voice. Um, so yeah, she is just amazing. We found her um through just mutual friends, and it's a very small network of musicians and and singers and artists in South Louisiana, and a lot of us know one of someone else in another band who knows someone else in another band. Yes. So I was just looking for someone to do a duet with. Like, I'd like to bring in a female for a song at the Texas Club one time, and, oh, I know Amber, I know it. So we brought Amber in, and I'm just like, after we sang, I'm just like, look, um, how about you come on full time? Let's just do this. You just join the band and forget anything else you're doing. Come on with us full time. And and that's uh, that was about two and a half years ago now. So, um, man, she's really elevated us and just her personality and her vocals and her stage presence is so awesome. And and she's such a, a pleasure to be around. Yeah, you know, yeah, and a great really singer in her own great right. Singer in her own right. She's amazing. Yeah, and I would imagine that for you is also a benefit. It gives you a good break yes. in between. Yeah, I take a I take a sip of water or something, you know, and and she carries the show without ever slowing down in in any way, shape, or form. And people love the dynamic between us because we do female songs now. So it's yes. not only just male driven. Now, um, you know, she'll do eight or ten songs a night in every show, and and people we do songs together and. People really, really love it. That's a great point, too. Yeah, you can get that female, the female songs out yes. there that people love. And, yes. and uh, she belts them out and does a fantastic job she with does. that. Fit blends of Denim Springs can help you with everything from meal prep to supplements. I love it that they serve breakfast all day. In addition to the best ultra-healthy wraps, you can really get anywhere in Livingston Parish. They are home of the $5 Smoothie Friday and are an amazing sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Fit Blends Denim Springs, fast, fit food for you. Now, y'all form the band and you're, you're rocking and rolling and you're getting things are kind of moving in the right direction. And, and, uh, November 24th, 2019, you actually did an amazing thing with the new Orleans saints. Tell I us did, about that, man. So I, our good friend, Carly McCord with yes. 100.7, the tiger who, uh, passed away. So she was there. I don't know what you would call it. She would go around and talk to people on the jumbotron, you know, in in uh, in between quarters and things like that. So she had an in with the Saints, and she's like, "Look, I know the people's email. Look, email these people, tell them who you are, and tell them what you can do, and send them a video of you doing the national anthem or whatever." So I did, I did all of that. Immediately they came back, and um, yeah, we we'd love to have you at a game, you know, and. Please, you know, come here, be here at this time, and nerves, 100%, you know, as soon as you get the email, because you get an official letter from the Saints, and, and it's it's exactly what you think it would be. It's just big gold envelope, you know, like the <laughs> whole, Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory, and flashing back to you, you know, Saints. I've got it's the golden legit. ticket. Yes, I've got the golden ticket. It was, it, was, it was amazing. I actually have it framed in my office at home. So oh, that's awesome. This, it's a really cool thing, right? Yeah. So, so, you know, you go in, you go early, and, and they have you go into, <laughs> into the dome before really anyone gets in there. So it's like the football players are warming up and everything. Drew Brees is right over there, and Sean Payton's right over there, and everybody's warming <laughs> up. And they're like, we want you to go. You, you, you have to rehearse. you got to go sing the anthem right now. I'm like, 
fifty yard line, and there's maybe a hundred people in in the whole stadium right here, except for the football players that are all around me at this yeah. point. You know, yeah. I'm on the fifty yard line. I'm singing the anthem as a warm up, and just trying not to you know drop the microphone and, <laughs> or fall down on my face or anything like that. So I do it, and you know, that's really the most nerve wracking part is after you do the warm up because they take you back to this little room. And you wait for two hours. Now yeah. we're going to sit here, wait for two hours, and we'll be back to get you when it's time. Oh, and you're just sitting there, you know, like, oh, God. You can hear <laughs> announcements going on. You hear people coming in. The stadium's starting to fill up, fill up, fill up. And you have two hours to sit in this little room oh, and that's think painful. about what you got to do now. <laughs> so finally the time comes, and they're like, okay, are you ready? And so I, I do. And, of course, they have my name on the door. It's all official. Saints logo all over it and everything. Oh, that's awesome. And, you know, Anthem Singer, that's hung up in my office as well. Uh, but so it's – it's if you've ever if you've ever been to a game, which, Joe, I know you have, it's, it's build up, build up, build up. As the players are coming out, build up, build up, build up, build up, build up, spotlight on Chase Tyler. Boom. That's it. <laughs> that's right. There's fireworks going off. All the players are running out of the tunnel, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then it is complete silence. Yeah. And it's like spotlight on you, 50 yard line, hit it. And <sighs> it is, you know, you can imagine the nerves. And yeah. Everything, you know? um, and you're singing the national, the national anthem. National anthem. People get serious when you jack up Absolutely. the national anthem, right? I'll never forget it like it was yet. I mean, it was just complete silence. All eyes are on you, hit it. And I did. You and did. I did a great job. Man. Nailed it. I, I, I never say that kind of stuff, but I go back and watch the video, knowing how nervous and terrified I was at the time. It was it was an awesome performance. It really wasn't. I'm gonna tell cool. you what it was. It is well known that that is one of the best national anthems ever sung in the, in <laughs> New Orleans that, Saints yeah. Stadium, and uh, it, you know, people it kind of thrust you onto a national yeah, stage like yeah, no other. It really did. That video has gotten thousands and thousands of views. And I, so I, I, I get finished. I run off the sideline, and I'm walking back down the sideline, and I feel this tap, and I just turn around, and it's Sean Payton. <laughs> no idea. Well, I'm like, hey, dude. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I'm shaking it. And he's like, that was one of the best performances yes. that I've heard. And I'm like, you didn't have to say that. Yeah. So I really appreciate it. You know, shook his hand and it was just, it was a, a really cool experience, you know, especially to hear that right then. It was amazing. And, and not the easiest of songs to sing. No. Definitely not no. the easiest of songs to sing under pressure like that. In uh, the stadium, you know, yeah. to 60 something thousand people that, that are, it, you know, it's really hard to hear. There's all kind of echoes going on, you know, I mean, yeah. it's not the best, um, you know, that you can, that you can do, but I, you know, I, I really enjoyed the opportunity. Yeah. And awesome. we're going to link, uh, in the description of this video, that video, Perfect. so people can, Perfect. they're going to be like, man, I want to hear it now. And <laughs> you, you scroll down, you're going to see a link there. Click it. It'll bring you right to it yes. on YouTube it and an you honor. can check that out. Yeah, it was, it was, it was really good. And Dane Arnold with iTrade Exchange has been enabling small business in the Livingston Parish area to save cash through his network of over 300 participating Livingston Parish businesses. Saving cash by trading services with other exchange members is what iTrade Exchange is all about. For more information, contact Dane Arnold at 225-205-3640 or visit itradeexchange.biz. I actually heard you sing it live, uh, a cappella right there uh, in North Park at, yes. an, at an, a small yes. event uh, during COVID. And I'm going to tell you what, man, my wife turned to me and she said, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just just got out there and just totally the, no band, no nothing. It yeah. was just Chase Tyler and a microphone, and you hammered it again. And I'm like, I should have been filming that. It's <laughs> nerve wracking anytime I get to do it, and it, but it's always an honor. I, I love to do the anthem because it, it means a lot to me and and what it represents. But mm -hmm. it is all whether I'm singing it to sixty thousand people or sixty. It's just, it's a very hard song to sing, for one, yeah. just the octaves, the way that, that it worked. But 
Um, it is. It's it's just it's an honor. It's always an honor to be asked. And since you know, since I did it at the uh, at the Saints game, I've been asked a gazillion times to do it in other locations, and I can't always do it. And I hate that I have to turn some down just to time restraints or whatever. But yeah, um, it's always an honor. It's always an honor to do it. Hundred percent. Now uh, we just mentioned COVID, and uh, COVID reared its ugly head, obviously in March of twenty twenty, and. I'm going to tell you what, there is no industry that got hit harder than the entertainment industry, right? Oh, that was, uh, COVID. I could not imagine the day y- you found out about COVID and you found out about all these restrictions and you were like, what? <laughs> no bars are open, no nothing. venues, no nothing. And I'm sure you had things on the books, things I, scheduled. Jim, so <laughs> the end of 2019, was probably the best of my career, okay, to date, because that was my second induction. Right after we did the Saints game, a week later, I was inducted into the Louisiana Music Hall of Fame yes. at the Texas Club. That's the second induction. So second induction. That was literally my best, you know, time frame from November to probably early March. We were killing it. You on a we roll. We were on a roll. Yes. You could not March 15th, 14th, I think it shut everything down. March 14th, I canceled six dates that one day. Oh, that means, they are calling yeah. in left and right, and I'm just, uh, you know, I have a text message with the band going, this canceled. You know, I'm sorry, I'm taking this off the calendar. This canceled, I'm sorry. By the end of it, by the end of March, I think we had canceled around 74 dates for that. Oh, year. my so gosh. Fairs. Uh, any, because our job involves a large group of people coming together at one time, yes. which is the one and first thing that got shut down immediately. Yeah. So all the fairs, festivals, um, casinos, uh, all the concerts that we had scheduled throughout 2020 was going to be amazing. Immediately canceled. Wow. Um, and that was, man, that was a really, really 2020 was very difficult. Uh, the bigger that you get, the harder that you fall, unfortunately, yeah. you know, and we, we had gotten to the point to where we've, you know, gotten sponsorships now and we have sponsorship people to, we've promised, made promises to these people. We can promote you here and here and here and here. And now, now they understood it's sure. not anything, you know, none of them were like, Oh my God, I can't believe it. But yeah, there's nothing that was out of anybody's realm of, of vision that anybody could foresee happening, you know? So, um, everyone understood and, and everyone was really nice about it, but it was very, very difficult. There was a lot of, um, unpaid bills there. For, sure. <laughs> that went yeah. On really I good. mean, this is your full-time <laughs> job, Chase Dollar. This is the entire band. Everyone yes. plays music for a living. So, we're all just kind of like, what do we do now? You know, and and uh, some of us went out and got other jobs. You know, yeah. uh, I drove a forklift for a year and a half in a warehouse, hoping I have I don't have any other skills. Man. Yeah, this is like this is it. It's been singing since I was seventeen years old. Right? Yeah, so I just like I you know some friends of ours would, were lucky enough to be like, look, I'm gonna give you a job, you know, till you can get back on your feet and everything starts coming back. And I did. I had to take another job, and um, so did everyone else in the band. Yeah, trying to play an acoustic gig or something outside where, you know, the government didn't know about it. Kind of thing, <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, it was just like, we're going to hide it over here and just kind of, you know, secretly tell people it was terrible. It was just terrible. It's just awful. And, and, um, you know, like we said, that was your full-time job. That was the only thing you did. And the problem with all of that, even more than the shutdowns themselves, was nobody could tell you when it would stop. No, it so it's so like, is this going to be nine years of of just no, you know, well, six feet and, yeah, and mask? Who and, knows? And uh, it just kept going. Well, that's the thing. Things would get like the spring festivals and fairs, and everything. Like we're gonna we're gonna reschedule. We're not canceling. We're gonna reschedule till the fall. Yeah. Okay, that's great. The fall gets here. We're gonna have to cancel that till next year. So it just kept going on, and we we just kept rebooking some of the same things, and and it was um it was just terrible. Oh, uh, yeah, man, you know, no one could tell you in the end. No one knew, and yeah, you know, hairdressers and entertainment industry folks really absolutely. Uh, you know, hairdressers were doing kind of the same thing. They were like, "I'm cutting hair anyway. Just absolutely. come to my house." To ki- we'll I mean, you got to make a living. Now. Absolutely. You got to eat. At what point do you just have to? I just I have to do what I have to do. Yeah, exactly. So. Tell me about the day you finally found out you can do what you love to do again. I mean, that day that they said, oh, live bands live are bands open are again. So we, uh, 
man, we've been playing. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. There were a few things that we did outside of Louisiana to whatever reason, um, not to get political in any way, shape, or form, because I'm not going to do that. But Louisiana got hit, I think, really harder than some other of our surrounding states. So we were able to go to Mississippi and do some things. Uh, They were a little bit more lenient on uh, some of their restrictions. Mm -hmm. So there were a couple of concerts that we got to do in Mississippi. It was, um, you know, a couple of things. And it was mainly everything was outdoors. Right. Everybody, that was the big thing. As long as you're outdoors and as long as it's less than a thousand people. And then they kept making these crazy rules. (laughs) And and, I... (laughs) Not going into everything political, <laughs> but there were some some really crazy, yeah. crazy rules, and um, so trying to follow the guidelines is. Be- and look, and some some states and some you know counties and some parishes were more hardcore than others. Yeah, and some would go look, just come in, play, we'll be fine, and and go on. So there were a few. Um, rebellious shows that we were able to put on in secret, uh, you know, that, that the government, uh, probably still doesn't know about, but, (laughs) you know, but you look, when we finally were able to be like, okay, the mask mandate is up. That's the, that's a big one for us. Um, because wearing masks and no one wants to go out into a crowd to try to wear a mask and do that whole social distance thing. You, You can't, you can't, we did several shows to where you couldn't dance. You were allowed to come in, but you had to stay seated. You couldn't go to the bar. So oh, what's the point God, in even yeah, going out? You know, at that point, it's like, man, I just, it was, it, it really got insane there for a little while. But I really now, things have um, have changed, honestly. Yes. You know, and I hope that it stays that way. Um, I know that we are here in, in November and, you know, it's almost Thanksgiving. So 98% of the fairs, festivals, uh, casinos, concerts, everything that we had scheduled for last year, this year that have been moved and moved are now rescheduled again. Yeah. And God willing, they're going <laughs> to, we're, we're going to get there and it's going to happen. That's you know, right. At this point, it's time. I, I just don't see uh, anybody stopping life anymore like that. I, I can tell you. I mean, it's, Jim, I didn't think it would happen the first time. Yeah. You know, it's so, true. I mean, like, I was like, because I'm hearing all these things that are coming down. Oh, they might shut this down. I'm like, no, nah, they'll never shut it. Come on. Dude, people never. ain't going to put up with that. And then they do. And I'm like, well, they'll yeah. never force everybody to wear a mask. And then they do. So yes. I, I, I just don't, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess know. you never say never, never anymore. Say never. I just yeah. don't know what's going to happen. You know, it's uh, it, well, you're you're back now, full force. I actually just went to an event over at uh, at the Mexican restaurant. Yeah, and, the Casa, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and it was amazing, man. That was just fun. flat out fun. And I'll fun. tell you what, Chase Tyler, I watch him tearing down after the event. Look, he's pulling speakers. Absolutely. I'm like, wait a minute, now you the you the lead no, singer look, here. I, <laughs> I'm never one. Look, I don't mind. I don't mind helping out at all. It's this is this is what I do, and and I have a great crew and and team behind me, and, and they understand. Sometimes I can't do that. Sometimes yeah. you know if we're selling merchandise or taking pictures or what, and that, and that's part of it. But if I have a chance to help, I don't mind helping. That's yeah. just that's you know that's that's what I do, and I, you know I don't mind helping. Well, I'll tell you, you rock you rocked it out on stage, and uh, I was there with a buddy of mine, Woody Overton. Woody Overton, no uh, well. and I'll tell you. Woody Overton has an audience, right? Oh, he's got gosh, a, yeah. and he's been a big supporter of yours, he and and uh, he's a Chase Tyler I'm fan. I'm There's a no Woody Overton it. fan. I, yeah, I love it. Yeah, they. Uh, it is, and it's a funny story because my uh, our friend Carly McCord mm-hmm. actually turned me on to Woody. I had no idea about the podcast, and she started talking to him and and listening to him, and and she actually got the whole band hooked on. You know, we're all riding down the road with us <laughs> listening to real life, real crime, talking about it at, at a certain point. So it's uh. It's kind of funny the, 
how small the world is. Yeah, know? it really is. And I actually learned of Woody Overton from Lori Goolsby yeah, because yeah. she was at a at my dentist. She used to work for my right, dentist, right. Dr. Doug. And uh, so I knew her through that. And I saw her post one day. Y'all got to listen to this. <laughs> you know how her posts are. Oh, absolutely. So I'm like, what is she absolutely. talking about? But I went and I listened to that very first episode that Woody put out. And I was hooked, man. I was like, wow. And and I look back on that now and I'm like, how do, you know, it's led to a really good friendship. Absolutely. Me and that guy. Woody's and, an amazing guy. Man. Yeah. He really is. And and that's the thing. So you listen for the first one and then you get caught up. So I've, I've, I've been caught up now and. I listen to a new one every time it drops, but what I'll do is go back and start over. Yeah, and you know, go back through the seasons, and now knowing some of the things that I know, it's insane, really, to listen to some of them again for the third time. Oh yeah, you know, it's <laughs> like man, you catch little things that you didn't realize. Yes, yeah, yeah. He's he's the best at he storytelling. Is. There's is. no doubt. Now you've opened for some pretty pretty big name bands: Three Doors Down, Leonard Skinner, Sam Hunt, Hank Williams Jr. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me ask you, have you ever been like almost nervous to meet these folks? Is there anyone that it was like, man, I'm I'm gonna actually meet, you know, Hank Williams yeah. Jr. in person and shake his hand. So there 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 are. There are times that a lot of this happens, you know, like backstage and it's very quick. You know, yeah. I understand. Like Hank Jr. doesn't have a lot of time to yeah. hang out with anybody, you know, and and Rightly so. He's yeah. a freaking junior. He can do it. Yeah, that's right. He wore a hat that night that said icon. So when you can oh, do that's that, awesome. you mean it, like you've, <laughs> you've made it. You know, I don't have to do whatever I want to do. That's so right. a lot of these things are very quick uh, with some of the really bigger artists. But, man, uh, i tell you what I got to. It was really cool that probably still one of the coolest things that I've gotten to do is I played golf with Tracy Lawrence. We opened up for Tracy Lawrence at the Texas Club. And yeah. I, I got to go and really spend the day with him. And he and I, I'll tell now because it doesn't matter. This was a couple of years ago. We shotgunned a beer on the ninth hole at Greystone Country Club. Yeah. And it was just, a, it was one of those moments like, Tracy Lawrence, yeah. man, you know. Shotgunned a beer yeah, with him. Yeah, shotgunned a beer with him. And, you know, we, we spent the day together and I asked him all kinds of a million questions, you know. And, and of course, he had a lot of great insights and, and he's hung out with Merle Haggard for, you know, ever. And they, yeah. they were good friends back. So I, I asked him all about that. But that was just a really cool moment. Um, I still get nervous meeting people, you know, I, I, it's just, especially people that you've looked up to for a very long time and yeah. in, in the business. And, um, but I tell you some of the coolest guy, Joe Nichols, probably one of the nicest people really? I've ever, ever gotten to just hang out and meet and, and super, super awesome guy. Um, Jake Owen, another awesome, nice person. Do you want to know somebody who wasn't nice though? Would love it. Like the worst Chris Cagle. No kidding. Very, very, and I'll tell anybody, and it's kind of a running joke now, but yeah. um, very, very terrible human being. And, I, and I'm not going to get into the whole story yeah. uh, because that's a whole nother hour podcast <laughs> that I can talk about, but it, very, very not a nice guy. And we'll, we'll leave it at that. Wow. Well, <laughs> I'll there tell you go. the story one day, Jim, I ain't never going is, to his concert. It is a story, and, and it is legit. Be, I, I, look, I can jerk understand. to my people. He was, a, he was a huge, huge jerk. And I think he wow. weighs about 400 pounds now and is not mm. singing anymore. And oh, rightly so. Karma. He deserves it. I know that might be mean, y'all. Trust me, he deserved it. No. Uh, look, karma's a... <laughs> it is. You know what it, it is. is. It is. It is. <laughs> William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance in Denham Springs can service all of your insurance needs. Offering auto, life, health, and commercial insurance, William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance is a proud supporter of Local Leaders, the podcast. I would hear that you were, and I know the answer now, but you were a two-time Hall of Fame uh, Louisiana Music Hall of Fame inductee. And originally, I'm like, wait a minute, how the heck can you be a two time? And <laughs> so Woody would say the same thing. Right. He's like, I don't know how that happens. It just <laughs> happens. So it's it's two different categories. It's, right. They're both in they're both in the Hall of Fame, but one is a future famer. Um, so that was you know that was in 2011, and and it's basically an award that says, look, we're going to put you in the Hall of Fame because we know that you're going to be a Hall of Famer, a yes. Louisiana Hall of Famer. We, we know that you're working your way towards it. So um, 
the second one in 2019 is the legit. Yeah, you're in. You've you're, made you're it. in. You've made it. Yeah. So it's. Um, yeah, I am in there twice, and it's it's a very cool situation because there's only four people in the entire history that have ever done that. Now I say that only because the first category had only just been started. Yeah. So I'm sure back in the day there would have been a lot more. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a, it's a cool it's a very cool thing to do and and I'm very honored to be a part of it. Well, we're going to get you a country music uh, a, a cowboy hat that says icon on it. Icon, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely. can wear that sucker. <laughs> I thought hey, that like was that the coolest thing. Junior. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it, man. I really thought I'm like that's cool cuz when you can get to that point and oh, meet man, it, that you is... know and be like, "Yep, yep he, he nailed it." And yeah. him of all people absolutely. would be the one one to I do agree. that i just can agree feel that about that yeah the glasses the beard the, and yes. the icon i'm like that's oh, yeah. awesome yeah that's pimp right the there. man like, right there is, man. uh now let me ask you you i'm sure you have some dates coming up some things you'd yeah. like to maybe provide on that end yeah so yeah so this thursday um we're going to be doing what's called rocking the row at perkins row yeah kind of like a live after five on thursday night at perkins row um, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll set up a, a big production and everything right out there in the middle, uh, in the common area, right across from the movie theater. And, um, so that's going to be this Thursday, this Thursday, and this awesome. coming Thursday. And uh, we have, uh, this actually this, this coming weekend is off. So I like to hunt as well. Yeah. As anybody, you know, our good friend Woody does too. Oh. Like that. So I, there are <laughs> Everybody else calls it Christmas time. He calls it hunting, he calls season. It hunting season. That's exactly <laughs> right. I have more power to you. I wish I had all that kind of time to do that. Yeah. And so I, I I'm going to take some time off to go hunting and, um, cause it's, I don't get very off. That's the downside when I take off. Everybody's got to yeah. right? that's the that's, so that's the only thing. So right. generally there's like two weekends a year where I'm like, okay, band crew, here's the situation. These are the two weekends. Take vacation around that. You know what I yeah. mean? And and just do what you gotta do. So they do. Everybody's planning vacations and stuff like that right now. So um the next probably the next uh biggest thing that we'll we'll have coming up is uh New Year's Eve. That's right around the corner. We have a lot of Christmas parties and things like that in yeah. December, but New Year's Eve will be at the uh, Crown Plaza. Uh, in Baton Rouge, awesome. That's always a big deal. Yeah, so, I've been there for deal. before for uh, for their New Year's, New Year's Eve Year's festivities, Eve. and I think I might look into getting some tickets to that one. Man, they're they're going to be released. I think December first. They're going to actually start um, with the ticket sales on that, and it is that is such a fun time. Yeah, I really enjoy that deal over there. Yeah, I remember one year I went to that. I don't remember who was playing, but it was a great time. And when me and my wife left, it was snowing outside. Mm. The only time it snowed on Come on New Year's on. Eve. Yeah, How man. And I was like, you couldn't freaking that. write this no, stuff. Absolutely. On New Year's <laughs> yeah. Eve. You just never know. Yeah, it was like little flurries. My wife has really curly hair, so it was like yeah. sticking. <laughs> yeah. You got snowflakes in your hair. Well, New Year's Eve. Well, I don't have, have hair, so. Right. You don't have to worry about it. I don't it. have that problem. It just bounces off of mine. Same it's crazy. Thing. Yeah. That's so awesome. uh, so look for that, folks, on uh, yeah. on New Year's Eve at the Crown Plaza. And uh, speaking of hunting, did you have you hunted with Woody yet? I have. So I, I've uh, been one time over to his place, and, and I killed a, a huge hog oh, um he's awesome. got a lot of hog problem over there he's like, i'm kill them all any, any anytime you want so um yeah i need to get back over there he actually told me at casa you know at the, he's like man it's, it's time you know, yeah come on I'm like you're right and it is so i definitely do want to go back over there he's got a nice setup out there yeah right? and them like, hogs are they, serious they man are serious they'll charge you in a heartbeat they will and they're they're so aggressive and, yeah uh, but yeah it's a lot of fun i really enjoy hunting awesome man yeah. well good deal uh i appreciate you coming on you telling us a little bit about your life yes. a little bit about what you got coming up so cool yeah. man we are huge supporters of yours and uh and always will be so uh i'm gonna the things chase tyler has talked about today of course i'm gonna link all that in in the uh in the description i'll keep everyone posted on those tickets yes. for uh new year's eve and when that comes out i'll shoot something out on facebook and let everybody know you got anything else you want just shoot it to me man and i and appreciate look it guys and what i tell everyone right now the best way to support live music and bands in general is to go to their shows yeah go, you know get out and i know it's, it's some people are still and i want to get out and that's fine I'm totally support that come out support your your favorite artist doesn't even have to be me just live you know venues in general that helps everybody you know 100%. Um, it's trying to get everything back to to normal and we are definitely almost there um 
things are, are starting to, to open back up and, and people are starting to come back out and I'm starting to see crowds get bigger and bigger. So, yeah, the best way to support a band or your local venue or artists or anything is just go to their shows. Yeah, you know, go to their to shows and, and participate. participate. Get out there and dance. Yes, absolutely. They love that we stuff. Do. It's so much fun. With, you know, bands feed off of the crowd and yes. the energy that you give to us, we give it back. So, yes, enjoy yourself. Yeah. You. Well, thank you again for coming on. Thank, thank you, you all you listeners for listening supporting uh local leaders podcast we couldn't do any of this without the support of all our fans and and all of that good stuff so thank you very much uh until next time i am jim chapman reminding you love your community support local business and local bands and keep leading thank you very much stephanie berthelot and the crew at sr enterprise can handle it all from sheetrock to texture to paint. Give Stephanie a call at 504-432-9284. SR Enterprise, where they spread the paint and you spread the word. Black Sheep Creative understands the importance of digital marketing and your return on your investment. It's their aim to provide professional web and graphic design services at a price point that smaller businesses and startups can afford. Get in touch with them on the web at blacksheepcreative.com. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.